Here I am today teaching the second part of Silk Road. I have taught it the first part of the Silk Road a few days back. So here I hope you have understood the first part. So let's continue with the second part, class 11. So we have done uh, till page 76 of the chapter Silk Road, which is in the Hornbill book, lesson 8. So students, I hope you are enjoying this uh, chapter. Please read very carefully everything which is described. So we have done till now that how the Silk Road was used in the ancient times to do trade from the east to the west. That is from China to the Europe and from Europe to China. So uh, the Silk Road was a land route which covered the entire area from uh, China to uh, Europe. Now, uh, the, uh, the author of the story, Nick Mid Middleton, he is describing his experience on this excruciating road of the Silk Road, which is the Silk Road, because he, were, he had a destination to go to Mount Kailash and do the Kora. So we have done till page 76. Let's continue, students. The slope was steep and studded. So as they were climbing the road, as they were on the ascent, so what the slope was steep, I hope you understand the steep. Steep means the very, very sharp, very firm. There are no, uh, the hilly uh, way was very, very F steep and studded. Studded means all uh, they were with huddles of rocks. Now stud studded I hope you understand the decoration which you will find. For example we say pearl studded earring means the pearl is decorated on the gold earring. So here so the way the slope was steep and studded with what how was it studded with major rocks. But somehow Satan negotiated them. Now, I hope you remember, students. Satan was the man who was driving the vehicle in which the author was traveling with. So, there were the three um, persons in that uh, on the way. That is the author with the author, the author, Satan and Daniel. So, three of them were traveling together on that way to Mount Kailash. So, but somehow Satan negotiated them, his four-wheel drive vehicle, lurching. Lurching means it was very started, it was very rocky. So, the vehicle was also lurching, means it was having uncontrollable, controlled movement. From one obstacle to the next, means from one rock to the next. And the way was, the slope was also very steep. In so doing, he cut off one of the hairpin bends. So, in on his way, as he was driving, he cut off one of the hairpin bends. Means a very sharp U-turn. That is, the edge of the mountain was so dangerous. But he was an expert driver and he made a hairpin bend. What is the meaning of hairpin bend? A sharp U-turn, U-shaped bend in a road is called a hairpin bend. Regaining the trail further up where the snow had not drifted. So regaining the trail means regaining the path. Getting back to the same kind of path where the snow had not drifted means the snow had not uh, washed away. It was there. I checked my watch again as we continued to climb in the bright sunshine. So I hope you remember the journey they started in the early dawn when it was mentioned in the beginning of the chapter that there was the ha flawless half moon could be seen in the early uh, red blushed sky. So by this time as they were traveling it was bright sunshine. We crept past 5400 meters and my head began to throb. So they traveled for 54,000 meters 
and the the author's head began to throb horribly means beat horribly horribly means very badly i took gulps the gulps means what in hindi you call nikal nikal kar nikalna so swallow drink or food quickly or in large mouthfuls from my water bottle so what did he do he took water and he took from his water bottle which is sel- which is supposed to help a rapid ascent so it was uh, he thought that by taking water it would be easier for him to take a rapid means very fast ascent uh, on that uh, mountainous road so what is the meaning of ascent a- ascent means a climb or walk to the summit of a mountain or to the top of the mountain or hill so what is the opposite of ascent it's descent we finally reached the top of the pass at 5515 meters it was marked by a large cairn of rocks so they reached the top of the mountains and there was a large cairn of rocks cairn means what a huge heap of a rock a mound of a rock on which the tibetan flags were hung so the pile of the mountain on the mount top of the mountain especially where someone is buried festooned with white silk scarves and ragged prayer flags so in all these areas now the silk road that is that covers uh, india's uh, uh, path also as well as it is in the foothills of tibet also so they were in that place there were the these flags you know the buddhists they high uh, they hung hang these flags these are the prayer flags which they hang from one rock to another rock in the mountains you all must have seen when you go uh, on trips to the mountain so what is a tibetan prayer flag you just see this way you all many of you must have seen that how they are hung in the hilly areas everywhere in sikkim himachal everywhere you will see all these flags are hung so a tibetan prayer flag is a colorful rectangular cloth often found strung along trails and peaks high in the himalayas now they are used to bless the surround why are these flags used these are the prayer flags to protect the surround to bless the surrounding country side and for other purposes so these are these were hung there found it we all took a turn round the cairn that is the heap of rough stones in a clockwise direction now they all of them they took a uh, round round the cairn cairn means the mound of rocks the heap of rough stones in a clockwise direction as in the is the tradition so what did they do it was it they did in a as, as it was the tradition that is clockwise direction and setin checked the tires on his wheels so setin what did he do he they were all traveling in that dangerous uh, road hilly road so setin who was driving the vehicle he checked the tires of the uh, of his vehicle he stopped at the petrol tank and partially unscrewed the top which emitted a loud hiss now since the vehicle was traveling in such an ex- uneven road such a rocky road that when he unscrewed the top to fill the petrol they it emitted a loud hiss that is gas was formed in it the entire engine of the vehicle had become very heated the lower atmosphere now there was low atmospheric pressure outside it was very cold atmosphere was allowing the fuel to expand so this is the scientific reason the lower pressure uh, outside atmospheric pressure outside was allowing the fuel inside the vehicle to expand it sounded dangerous to me maybe sir set in laughed but no smoking my headache soon cleared as we careered down the other side of the pass so the author's headache soon was uh, clear as they went sinking the uh, career uh, down to the other side of the pass it was 2 o'clock by the time we stopped for lunch that is it was 2 pm in the afternoon it was 
when they stopped for lunch. We ate hot noodles. Now, what did they eat? They ate hot noodles inside a long canvas tent. So, they sat in a canvas tent. I hope children, you understand the tent which they use in the mountainous area. That is, that is just a, a mobile kind of earth protection made. And they ate what? Hot noodles. So here you see they ate hot noodles and inside the long canvas tent part of a work camp erected beside a dry salt lake. So where was it? It was beside a dry salt lake. Now all these salt flats what are they? They are also called salt pans which are large and flat areas that were once lake beds so all these salt lakes salt flats they are all the they are formed by the large lakes which have which were long time back and now the salt flats have been created on this the plateau is pockmarked uh, that is the plateau means the little uh, high little elevated kind of land so is pockmarked that is discovered disfigured with a scar which with salt flats and blackish lakes so there was a little plateau area little uh, plateau is what a little table land a little elevated land which was with salt flats and blackish lakes so there were the salt flats were there and there were the brackish lakes so what are the these brackish lakes these are slightly salty water which are vest vestiges of the Tits Ocean. So, what are these? These are the vestiges of the Tits Ocean. Now, here you see the Tits, tits Ocean was an ocean long time back, long time in the time when the continental collision was taking place in this on this earth. So, these Tit Ocean here you see which bordered Tibet before the great continental collision had lifted its skyward. So what happened when the continental collision, when all the continents were formed, the, uh, the entire, all the land pieces, they came together and formed the seven continents. At that time, the Tits Ocean was lifted skyward, means towards the upper part. Are you understanding it? So they are traveling in this part. Now this one was a hive of activity. Now this area was a hive of activity. Now hive of activity means what? It is the it is a very busy place. Hive we understand where a lot of work, a lot of action is taking place of different activity. Men with pick axes and shovels trudging over. So where are the men? What were the men doing? All these are what? These are the pickaxes. Now here you see. So these are the you see here. These are the pickaxes and shovels. These are the shovels. The men were all busy with the pickaxes and shovels trudging back and forth in their long sheepskin coats. So what were they doing? They were walking backwards, forwards with their long sheepskin coats they were wearing and the boots were salt and crusted. Means the boots, the footwear which they were wearing, they were all full of salt bits because those were sand, salt lakes, no? All the brackish water was there, all salty water was there and that was formed with the from the vestiges of the Tits Ocean. Vestiges means small traces left of the ocean. All wore sunglasses. Now these workers, they wore sunglasses against the glare as a steady stream of blue trucks emerged from the blindingly white lake, white lake laden with piles of salt. So how were they, what were they traveling? They were all wearing sunglasses. They were working with the pixels, they were working with shovels and they were, the trucks, the blue trucks were emerging the, on the white lake laden with piles of 
salt. So the lake is there which is covered with all salt pans, salt flats. By late afternoon, we had reached the small town of Hor, back on the main east-west highway that followed the old trade route from Lhasa to Kashmir. So where did they reach? They By late afternoon, they reached the place that is from Lhasa to Kashmir. Now Daniel, who was returning to Lhasa, found a ride in a truck. So all the trucks were coming on that way. So what did Daniel do? He had to return to Lhasa and therefore he uh, found a ride in a truck. So Satan and I bid, so what? The author and Satan bid Daniel farewell. He, because Daniel left for Lhasa where he was to return. Farewell outside a tire repair shop. So where did he, they leave him? Outside a tire repair shop. We had suffered two punctures. Two punctures in what? In the tire. Two punctures in quick succession on the drive down from the salt lake. Thatched roof covered with salt, with snow. And Satan was eager to have them fixed. So they had experienced two punctures. And Satan was eager to have them fixed since they left him with no spares. Besides the second tire he had changed, had been replaced by one that was as smooth as my bald head. So the author had bald head, you understand, no? When there is no hair. So he is comparing his head, the second tire which they had changed, that had become in that rocky mountainous area, it had become very smooth. There were, the tire was no more a tire. It had become as smooth as his bald head. Hole was a grim miserable place so uh, the place where they reached was whole it was a grim grim means what gloomy miserable place there was no vegetation whatsoever only land no plants trees no vegetation just there was dust and rocks liberally scattered with years of accumulated refuse so this whole place was had accumulated refuse means what litter all garbage which was unfortunate given that the town sat on the shore of Lake Mansarovar. So it was really unfortunate that the town whore was sitting at the shore means at the bank, at the shore of the beautiful Lake Mansarovar, Tibet's and what is Mansarovar? Tibet's most venerated stretch of water. Mansarovar is for Tibet. It is the most venerated, means respected stretch of water. So children, I hope you are understanding this beautiful path of the Silk Road on which the author was traveling to go and finish his Kora on the Mount Kailash. Now see, this is not in the book. This is, I have given just a reference for your, uh, for your reference work, for your chapter. That what is this is the beautiful Mansarovar children, Mansarovar lake. This exceptionally beautiful lake is one of the most important pilgrimages for both the Hindus and the Buddhist. The blues of the lake mirror the blue sky. Now the lake Mansarovar just mirrors the sky in it. The blue sky, clouds and white mountain peaks. The mystical beauty, mystical means it's very... Surreal, divine beauty will surely leave you in awe, means in surprise and wonder. The highest, and this is what the highest freshwater lake in Tibet looks magical in the moonlight also. So they reached Hor, which is on the bank of this Lake Mansarovar. Now ancient Hindu and Buddhist cosmology pinpoints Mansarovar as the source of four great Indian rivers, that is the Indus. So it is the uh, source of four great Indian rivers, that is the Indus, the Indus, Ganges, sorry, Ganges, Satlaj, and of course the Brahmaputra. Here, sorry, the Brahmaputra. 
so this is the i hope you have understood children now next you see actually only the satluj flows from the lake but the head waters of the others all rise nearby on the flanks of mount kailash so actually only the satluj flows from the lake but the head waters of the other three rivers all rise nearby on the flanks means on the side of the mount kailash we were within striking distance of the great mountain and i was eager to forge ahead that is go move ahead but i had to wait sitin told me to go and drink some tea in horse only cafe so there was only one cafe from where sitin told the author to drink tea like all other buildings in town was constructed from badly painted concrete and had three broken windows so it had badly painted concrete and three broken windows in the cafe in that tea shop the good view of the lake through one of them helped to compensate for the drought so from that uh, cafe they could get the beautiful view of the lake which lake the lake mansarovar from which which helped them to compensate for the drought so what they were drinking the tea so the beautiful scenic beauty of the land uh, lake mansarovar may compensated all the Uh, the bad place they were in where they had there was uh, three broken windows and it was uh, constructed and badly painted i was served by a chinese youth in military uniform who spread the grease around on my table so it was a very dirty table and he just cleaned the table with a grease means with a dirty sticky cloth with a filthy rag means a torn cloth before bringing me a glass and a thermos of tea so what did he give he gave him a glass and a thermos of tea half thermos means i hope children you know it's a container it's a bottle in which the uh, liquid any liquid remains very hot so half an hour later satan relieved me from my solitary confinement and we drove past a lot more rocks and rubbish westwards out of town towards mount kailash now this is the beautiful mount kailash children so what did satan after half an hour solitary confinement means he was alone there in that place in the cafe the uh, satan took him out on the rocks and rubbish westwards out towards the mount kailash my experience in ho came as a stark contrast to accounts i had read of earlier travelers first encounters with lake mansarovar so uh, the author says that his experience in hor or his experience was a very bad a very unpleasant one which was different which was unlike the earlier travelers first encounters means first view of the Ma- lake mansarovar so he here he mentions the uh people who had given such splendid uh, uh description of mansarovar here ikai kawaguchi a japanese uh, monk so what what is his name ikai kawaguchi one of the uh, one of the uh, japanese monk who had arrived there in 1900 so way back in 1900 he had given the description of lake man parsarovar that is he was so moved by the sanctity means by the purity of the lake man sarovar that he had burst into tears that what a creation god has given to the humans that what a what how lucky human beings are to see that beautiful lake man sarovar a couple of years later the hollowed Uh, waters hallowed waters hallowed means very holy revered sacred had a similar effect on swain hayden so who is the another man he is the uh, he is this another uh, traveler was swain hayden he was a swedish he was a swed who had who wasn't prone to sentimental outbursts 
that is who was not very prone to all these sentimental outbursts means sentimental expressions but ikai kawaguchi who was a japanese monk he started crying a, so and a similar effect also came on swin hidden who was a swede and he also was not used to all these sentimental expressions but he too started crying after seeing the splendid creation of god that is lake mansarovar a beautiful description the author has given of mount kailash and mount Ma, lake mansarovar it was dark by the time we finally left again and after 10:30 pm we drew up outside a guest house in darchin so darchin is at the foothills of tibet only or which falls in the silk road for what turned out to be another troubled night so they reached darchin at 10:30 pm in the night kicking around in the open air rubbish dump that passed for the town of four had set off my cold once more so kicking around in the open air rubbish dump which they had to pass which is described that there was no vegetation he caught cold severe cold once more though if truth be told it had never quite disappeared with my herbal tea so he had taken the herbal tea in the cafe but that cold which he had caught had not disappeared one of my nostrils was blocked again and as i lay down to sleep i wasn't convinced that the other would provide me with sufficient oxygen so one of the nostrils nostrils means through which the, the the nose the nostrils are in the nose with through which we breathe so one nostril was blocked and he was thinking the other would provide him with sufficient oxygen for him to breathe my watch told me i was at 4760 meters at heart it wasn't much higher than ravu and there i had been gasping for oxygen several times every night so it was not much higher than ravu and there he had been gasping for oxygen several times that is he was he was prone to such a uh, uh, such a kind of uh, problem with his breathing i had grown accustomed to these so in ravu also he was having problem and he was he had grown accustomed means he had grown habituated with all these nocturnal disturbances by now so what is it it is the nocturnal disturbances means what it is the um, nocturnal means what all night time so at night time all these disturbances he had from uh, by now uh, by now but they still scared me so he he had uh, often experience such nocturnal disturbances but he uh, but now he was he was used to it but now but it still scared him that he would have problem in breathing i hope children you have understood this nocturnal means night time but this still scared him he was accustomed and this still scared him means he became afraid of such attacks where he could not breathe properly because in the nocturnal in the night time only he had such problem hope hope students you all are understanding if you don't understand students please write in the comment box so that i can explain you a little more and uh, if you are liking my video my explanation please don't forget to subscribe the channel like it and share it with your friends tired and hungry now the author proceeds tired and hungry it's night time and early morning they had started their journey i started breathing through my mouth so his nose was nostrils were blocked now he started breathing through his mouth after a while i switched to a single nostril power so after some time he switched to single nostril power which seemed to be admitting enough oxygen so what did it seem it seemed to be admitting enough oxygen but just as i was drifting off i woke up abruptly so just as he was drifting means he was getting a little dazed what he 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 
he collected himself, he gathered himself and he woke up abruptly. Something was wrong. So he was unable to breathe. He was gasping. He thought that something was wrong. My chest felt strangely heavy. That is, he was unable to get oxygen. And I sat up. So what did the author do? He sat up and a movement that cleared my nasal passages. He sat up and he made a movement which cleared his nasal, his nostril passages almost instantly and relieved the feeling in my chest. Curious, I thought. That is, it was strange, he thought. I lay back down and tried again. Same result. I was on the point of disappearing into the land of naught. So, same result and he, he sat, he tried to breathe through his uh, nasal, through his nostrils, but it was very, very difficult for him and he thought that he was, he was going off to sleep. Land of Nod means to sleep. When something told me not to sleep, if he slept, you know, what happens? People die in that kind of state. That is, they are unable to breathe and they die also. It must have been emergency electrical impulses again, but this was not the same as on previous occasions. I can very well understand that he had caught cold, of the severe cold, because he was traveling in minus degree in the Mount Kalash, near Mount Kalash. Uh, impulses again, but this was not the same as on the previous occasions. This time, I wasn't gasping for breath. I was simply not allowed to go to sleep. His was so choked, his heart was, his chest was so heavy that he could not sleep also. Sitting up once more immediately made me feel better. I could breathe freely and my chest felt fine. Again he sat up and he felt a little better. But as soon as I lay down, my sinuses filled and my chest was hot. So as he was lying down, his sinus, sinus means what? The the cavity which is in the in the in the base of the nose and the uh, and the f uh, forehead so it is the sinuses were filled and his chest became very heavy i tried propping myself upright against the wall he tried to hold up against the wall but now i could not manage to relax enough to drop off I could not put my finger on the reason, but I was afraid to go to sleep. So as he was lying down, he was getting the suffocation. He was unable to breathe. So he was afraid to go to sleep. A little voice inside me was saying that if I did, I might never wake up again. So his subconscious, his mind was telling that if he slept, then he would never wake up again. He would die in his sleep. So I stayed awake all night. I, he was having sleepless symptoms and sudden aversion. That is a strong dislike to lying because of his choked chest. Satan took me to the Darchin Medical Hall. So where did Satan took him? To the Darchin Medical College the following morning. The medical college at Darchin was new and looked like a monastery. Everything had the Tibetan look known. So that medical college was also looking like a monastery from the outside with very solid door. How the monasteries are huge, high doors are there. Uh, so solid door and led into a large courtyard that is a large open space. We found the consulting room which was dark and cold and occupied by a, so you see the doctor was, he was occupied by a Tibetan doctor who wore none of the paraphernalia. That is, he wore none of the, how doctors are, appear. They wear a white coat and they have the stethoscope. So he had no paraphernalia, means he had no article, no items of what do the, the doctors had, have that I had been expecting. No white coat. He looked like any other Tibetan with a thick pullover and a woolly hat. So, naturally it is a very cold area. So, he was looking like any other Tibetan with a thick pullover uh, coat kind of thing and a hat also that was, was a bull, woolly, woolen hat. When I explained my sleepless symptoms and my sudden aversion, aversion means dislike to lie down, 
he shot me a few questions while feeling the veins in my wrist so as a doctor checks feeling the veins in his wrist and he asked a few questions it is a cold he said finally through setin so in his language he told setin that it's just a common cold a cold and the effects of solitude why was the uh, author so much sick because of cold he had got cold and the effects of altitude altitude means height i'll give you something for it i asked him if i if he thought i'd recover enough to be able to do the kora so uh, the author asked that he would be enough he would be better he would be he well to finish his kora oh yes he said you will be fine so the doctor also said that he would be fine so here students i you read again whatever i have explained and i will again pick up the rest of the chapter in my next session